And we are live. What's up, guys? Welcome to the Fresh Fit Podcast. We're here with Jose Zuniga from Teaching Men's, Men's Fashion. Fashion. Hey, we got a great up, show man. for y'all. Let's get right into let's it, Let's go. <laughs> We are back. We're back, guys. What's up? Welcome to the Fresh Air Podcast. We're here with Jose Zuniga from Teaching Men's Fashion. <laughs> Thank you on a Saturday. Yeah. Yes, on a Saturday. But we had to break the rule and bring in the special guest, man. You guys have been asking for him for a while. I'm actually a supporter myself. I've been watching your channel Appreciate since, it. man, 2018. Yeah. Uh, a quick little story time here. We'll go back in memory lane. So the year is uh, 1940. 20, the year is 2018. <laughs> <laughs> they, they didn't have computers back then. Yeah. The year is 2018, mm -hmm. and I'm getting ready to sh uh, uh, move from Laredo, Texas, to Miami, Florida. When I was living in Laredo at the time, you know, we were doing raids and you know, arresting people, all this other shit. So I didn't really care too much about how I dress. I'm on the Mexican yeah, yeah, yeah. border, bro. I'm not here to try to pull chicks or none of that shit. I'm wearing like fucking polo shirts and jeans and Sperry's, you know, outdated Stand shit. standard, yeah, 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 outdated shit. That's you, nigga, wearing football. Came out of Maryland, Sperry's. God damn. Yeah, no, I'm from Connecticut, man. So that's what we used to wear. We didn't give a fuck. But, what boys? Um, facts. Uh, yeah. So then I moved to I, I moved to Miami, and I'm like, bro, I gotta readjust the way I dress and get in, in, in tune with 2018. So I start watching your channel, picking up tips, um, you know, from the top five shirts you got to have to the top Bro. jeans that you got to be wearing. You yeah. got to have a <laughs> pair of regular wash, stark wash, black wash, maybe white pants, even if you want to add, have a plain white tee, black tee, et cetera. Did it and help? It helped a bunch, dude. Yeah, that's all and, I need to know. Um, ever since then, I've kind of taken that um, foundation and adjusted it to the current fashion. Now, nowadays, I wear just merch because it's like yeah. whatever. But We're rich um, now. Definitely Doesn't matter. <laughs> was a great channel. <laughs> was a great channel to get my um, I guess fashion journey started, man. So I want to personally tell you thank you. I hey, appreciate on the that, air. Man. I didn't want to tell you that, that before. I just want to tell you right now. Really appreciate that. Um, man. so I will say awesome. what I've learned from you is that like you can get simple pieces and make it work for you. You don't need yeah, like yeah. the whole most, most extravagant piece, you just yeah. get like simple pieces put together, yeah, keep it clean, and you're good to well, go. The thing is that I was I was always I was poor, right? I was born poor. My parents were immigrants. We were talking about this, right? Yeah, yeah give them um, a background on, on your your uh you're growing up um well simple rundown then would be uh you know so i'm from honduras uh, we were talking about this central american country uh third world country probably i think it was rated the, the poorest country in central america or latin america for a couple years and it was also the the number one murder capital of the world for a couple years so like bottom of the barrel right uh, my parents moved here luckily i was born here but then for whatever reason they decided to go back so i go back spent a few years there and then thankfully they come back, right? So when they come back, same thing immigrants do, right? So they're doing like the, the house cleaning. My dad was a landscaper. So mm. talking minimum, I think my dad used to make like five bucks an hour or something. So mm. minimum yeah. wage, right? Damn. So for me at the time, one of, one of the things that my parents really installed was uh, just because we were poor, you, you didn't have to look dirty or have to look homeless, right? Yes. So yeah. you always, like you always had to look polished, right? Even if it was Walmart jeans, you had to look good. And I think that's really what kind of like sparked the whole like, Bro, you don't need designer. You don't need expensive stuff to just look decent. And really, that's kind of what started the hobby. When when I started uploading videos, it was always like, all right, spending a hundred bucks on Walmart. What can I put together? Yeah, and I remember people, those videos. People resonated with that, right? Um, and that what what people don't uh, really kind of put together unless I explain to them that is that all my videos are just a representation of my journey, right? So like, if you look at Jose, sixteen years old poor scrawny nerdy goofy right like mm -hmm. I, I had no confidence all that type of stuff and so i start first with my style i start fixing that up then i start talking about getting women i think when i was like 17 18 because usually that's when you're you know hormones are flying you're yeah, trying to course. get chicks yeah. and stuff like that mm -hmm. then i start talking about confidence and i start talking about building business so it was like if you go to that first video it's it's a real documentation of what a man can go through and this is what i said in, the, in a previous video 
it ain't overnight, right? So people want like a five tip hack to get women tomorrow, microwave, yeah, or facts. get or get money tomorrow. Yeah. Mine was a ten year. Pro- I'm 27, right? Yeah. I started when I was 17. It, it was a decade long process, mm-hmm. right? So now, even today, all my goals and all my views are always five, ten years out. Like, mm-hmm. where am I going to be in ten years, mm-hmm. right? That it's it's never overnight. So basically, um, that's kind of where the inspiration started. I, like I said, I started posting on YouTube. I think when I was like 17, mm-hmm. and uh, it was a hobby. It was never a business, and then it slowly started morphing and. To what we're today yeah no that's that's a quick rundown. Man. that's powerful um so you did the opposite um mm-hmm. you know when me and you were texting i noticed your number is from west palm beach yeah. and i was like wait this guy's from south florida born and raised um, man and I, and I had known that you were you were from florida i just didn't know exactly what part yeah, when yeah. i was watching your older videos i know you and your brother run a spanish channel yeah that's true. um but my thing is you did the opposite you actually moved to new york yep. versus all the new yorkers moved down here yeah, 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 can you yeah. tell us about why you decided to leave uh, south florida and go to new york and do it and go against the grain well, here? i mean it's, it's west palm bro you, you get out of there yeah <laughs> <laughs> but still i want to leave west palm for new york bro like yeah, that. Man. but yeah why, why'd you why'd you have to so, make that move um for me it was mainly work uh mm. when you're down here in south florida everybody's mentality is vacation mode yeah. You're either you, you're either retired or vacation or partying here. That's yeah. usually the mentality, mm-hmm. which also resembled the workforce. So everybody that we would hire had that same mentality. Uh, for example, bro, I have my my routine is insane. My discipline, like, I was texting you at four in the morning on a Saturday. Yeah, right. Like, yeah, yeah. and by the way, this guy's a psychopath. <laughs> yeah, he wasn't sleeping. He doesn't sleep, bro. He doesn't sleep at all. Yeah. It's, it's, it's I scary. thought he was playing when he told me I don't no. sleep. But <laughs> all right, it's psychopath. Yeah. I never get a quick response at four in the morning. It, right? I know I got signed the next day. I was like, uh, yeah, we got to because I was like, he's, you're coming in, so I want to make sure that I'd be ready and everything. And you want Myron text him at, in the morning, not in the daytime. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So it, it's weird for somebody to ping me back like immediately. Yeah. Yeah. This, this dude pings me back, but mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. Uh, so I've always had that schedule. And uh, here, when you wake up, I was telling him that, like, for example, when you wake up here early in the morning, it's quiet. Yeah. Or, bro, like, the streetlights aren't even on type of thing, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, over there, the hustle and bustle is already starting. There's people already at the office, right? Like, it's motivating. And when you hire people, it also resembles that uh, framework, right? A lot of the people are also there to make money. Another thing that I really liked was uh, the feeling of being smaller. So uh, where I was from, I was the big fish. Mm-hmm. So, for example, with all our companies, we have contracts with FedEx and UPS, and they would always come to us and tell us that we were the largest mover in the entire area, mm-hmm. right? What that meant was whatever we wanted, we got, basically. Mm. We were the big fish just by the sheer amount of volume of product we would move daily. When we move to New York, that gets flipped on its head. I'm no longer the big fish in a, big, in, in, in a, in a small pond. I'm a little fish now. And it's funny now because being a millionaire in New York, <laughs> it's it's really a shrug. Yeah. It's yeah. really a shrug. It's true. And even with the sheer true. amount that we're moving today, we're still like we're not even close to the top dogs in New York right. City. Right? So it, it gives you this space to fill now. Like it gives you this new uh vision to unlock. You start seeing what real wealth looks like. Yeah. And it's it's insanely motivating. You're a small fish in a big pond. Insanely motivated. Mm. Insanely motivated. I will say this, um, because one thing I remember um Brandon Carter King Keto, shout out to him. He came down here uh, like a couple of years ago mm-hmm. and he was like, bro, man, I could see why. I don't know why why anyone would want to be here because I wouldn't get no fucking work done, man. He moved eventually here. He's here now because just it's, it's way better to be than New York. But um, there's there's no doubt about it. One thing I will say about the city versus like South Florida in general is that people in New York City and I would say the Northeast in general typically work harder than people from here. It, 100%. I don't know what it is. It's, it's, yeah. it's just like because there it's like er, people are more educated, uh, higher earning. Um, it's more competitive. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's so if, if, if you think about it here in Miami, you have the beach, you have different restaurants, party spots all over, yeah. nonstop. So it's like, hey, you want to take a break? Just take a break, go on the beach, drink, drink some rum punch and relax. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is a party location and people that you you source from here, the talent that you source from here usually has that same mindset, yeah. which is not in, uh, inducive for growth, especially if you're Correct. trying to to scale really fast something, right? Yeah. Uh, not what I needed at the time. Yeah. But yeah, absolutely. New York City. And, and and on top of that, you have the highest concentration of millionaires, the highest Facts. concentration of billionaires. Yep. Like mm-hmm. literally everyone I bump into. In a small area too. Small everyone geographic. I bump into in my building that I live in is somebody. Like you'd be surprised. Mm-hmm. Right? Like CEO of this big company. CEO of this big company. You live like, in Manhattan? Yeah. Yo, I live in the nice. city. Damn. Nice. So like it's, yeah. it's insane that in my building, like everybody is somebody. Yeah. Everybody you run into is somebody. Yep. And again, you, you just feel small. 
and and I'm highly competitive. Yeah. I don't like the feeling of feeling small. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so I only got one thing left. I, I want to keep scaling. I want to keep growing. So I, I love New York City for that. I think the energy is invaluable on top yeah. of the connections. That's, that's good for networking. So you mentioned uh, a couple of businesses that you run. <clears throat> can you tell us uh, real quick? Uh, yeah, so we can run through them. Uh, so I have Essentials as a clothing brand. Uh, that's probably the largest one that we own. I, I've talked about it before. I think Matt, we'll do like a million in, in, in revenue in a day for a, on a single launch. That's fucking awesome. Uh, we have He Grooming, we ha which is a grooming company. We have um, uh, Santa Lucia, which is a fragrance company. We have Jay Black, which is an eyewear company. All these are seven-figure companies. Mm -hmm. And then I was lucky enough to also own, I'm part owner of a company called Manscaped, which I'm sure you guys have seen. Yeah. Check oh, the okay. Manscaped. I did yeah. not know that. Shade those balls, yeah. nigga. Okay. They just hit a billion dollar valuation. Okay. Uh, wow. So we're part owners of that one too. Um, and then we just started a new company in New York City, which is my first tech company, which is Awe. Uh, it's same day delivery and same day returns for anything retail. So Gucci, Apple, Best Buy, all the Nike Whatever you want, you want Air Forces now. They get delivered the same day. You so don't like, like it's a cart, but but like on a, similar, a, for, but for the like vision, products. it's insane. So and then you can also return, right? So if you don't like it, you could return. The idea is to merge offline and online. So to merge the benefits of e-commerce with the benefits of retail into one. Yeah. Um, and by the way, we're we're scaling that out. What we started with, which is phase one, this is the baby stage. This is the easy stage, which has been hell. It took yeah. two years over a million dollars self-funded, like everything comes out of my pocket, right? So I don't yeah. have debt, I don't have VCs, none of that stuff. Um, that one's gonna be, if, if I do this right, mm -hmm. that's my B, mm. that's my B. That's mm. a unique uh, um, service because, uh, you know, you obviously have Instacart, you can order food and stuff like that, but you can't really get luxury items through I it. have zero competitors where I'm at right now. Yeah, There's zero competitors in retail and zero competitors in reverse logistics. Reverse logistics is the process of returning goods. If you look at the entire market, we're talking about a $600 billion market with a B, and there's no competition. What about mm, Amazon? Right? They don't do reverse logistics, mm. right? So like reverse, so for example, I don't know about you guys, but uh, the entire industry of returning merchandise that you've bought is, is, is sluggish, has a lot of friction. It's not frictionless, it's not seamless. Yeah. So for so me, for example- do it on purpose. Uh, correct, so, so for me, I, I you to return. Go, go to my closet, I guarantee you, you'll find things with tags, because I'm too lazy to return them. Yeah. The, the effort to return Go to is, UPS, get a I box. Gonna I'm not gonna do all that. It's just gonna stay there, honestly, and then I'll end up donating, right? right? A lot of people act that way too, just because it's just, it's too much, right? Yeah. So with us, uh, we'll do it seamless to the point that it'll get picked up out your door. Packaging, mm -hmm. shipping label, everything gets handled for you. And then gets returned the whole nine. So I got a question for you, Jose, uh, since you're mentioning that. And I've had this discussion with other people as well. I've always believed that um, with like things like Uber, Uber Eats, mm -hmm. um, Lyft, yeah. Instacart, yeah. this service that you're talking about now, Netflix, et cetera. We live in an on-demand society. Correct. You know, and at movie theaters, all these things are going to be extinct very soon. I mean, we saw it with Blockbuster. You yeah. know, we saw it with a couple of other companies as well. Do you believe that in the next decade or so, Mm -hmm. that um, retail in general is just going to be wiped out and most things will be online? No. No? No. Okay. I, I, if it, man, I don't know if, if we want to go down this route. I don't talk a lot about this just because <laughs> I, I feel like people don't have a lot of, it, it doesn't serve a lot of value for your average person. Yeah. yeah. Um, but we can if you want to. But uh, So I'm in an industry that you call direct-to-consumer, which are goods that you sell directly to a consumer that there's no, uh, there's, there's no middleman, there's yeah. no retail, there's no, no brick and mortar, right? Uh, so for the longest, in the early 2010s, DTC was the big hype, right? Okay. So all these DTC companies, you can look into them yourself. They were the big hype, billion dollars. Which is direct to consumer, guys, direct by the way, consumer. what are you talking about? Correct. When he says DTC. Correct, direct to consumer companies. These were the big boys, right? Yeah. Uh, what ended up happening is with all these companies, they ended up, they started scaling super fast. And a lot of it was through VC money, which is venture capitalism, yes. right? Mm -hmm. uh, investors. Investors, correct. So when you're scaling a company, one, one key metric that you always look at is your customer acquisition cost. So what is the cost it takes you to acquire a new customer, yeah. right? Most of these companies acquire customers unprofitably and they're able to do so because they're pumped with money. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right? Almost too big to fail, essentially. It ends up being like a Ponzi scheme, yeah. right? Uh, so what ends up happening with a lot of these companies that had billion plus valuations, and you can Google this yourself. I'm not going to name drop the companies because they're massive, Understood. but um, you can Google this yourself. Mm. Most of them have been cut by a fourth in valuation. And the mm. only branches that those companies are profitable in are in their retail. 
Does that make sense? Okay. So, so when you say retail, are we talking like brick and mortar people actually correct. going so into take, the store take and buying? D, yeah, oh, take wow. a DTC okay. brand. Let's okay. call them. And you probably are thinking of them now because you've heard these brands. They're massive. You can yeah. do, right? DTC brand Jose. I was only online, but then I started scaling really fast. I had a lot of money. So now I start putting retail stores in big cities, San Francisco, New York City, et cetera, okay. right? Dick's. <laughs> Dick's Sporting Goods? No, they were a retail. They started retail, moved to e-com. Okay. Think, start e-com, move to retail. Okay, okay. You've you've heard the brands. I, we'll talk about it afterwards, okay. right? I don't want to name drop the brand. Okay, that's okay. fine. They're sponsors too. <laughs> <laughs> um, but basically, what ends up happening is these brands now that th when you start looking at their financials, completely unprofitable. And the only branches that are profitable are their retail sector. Wow. Okay. Okay. So I'm learning. I don't think retail will die. And like I said, I don't think none of this is really valuable for the audience, but basically retail won't die and won't go anywhere. E-commerce won't go anywhere. I think they both will live harmoniously. Um, and I do think that there is a new market to create that is a merge between retail and e com that hasn't been tapped, that that's where I'm going to come in. That's okay. the goal with our So with the phase that you're seeing now, by the way, we're I'm out 10 phases already. I've okay. planned this out 10 years. Mm -hmm. I know what every single phase will bring out and yield. Bam. Everything's been scaled out, right? Okay. Uh, so you started online and now you're going out and <clears throat> creating brick and mortar retail yeah, so stores. I love my DTC brands, but I read this book. I don't know if you guys know this guy called Peter Thiel. Have you ever heard of him? I've never heard of him. No. Okay. Uh, he was one of the co-founders for PayPal. Okay. Okay. Sold for billions. Uh, and now he owns a company called Palantir. Also billion. It's like $40 billion. The government uses that. Bingo. I, I, I... He is the founder of Palantir. Okay. The, the dude's a G. Yeah, Do the Palantir is is a for the people that are wondering, it's a law enforcement tool used to yep. conduct investigations that helps you link suspects and criminals and everything else like that. Bingo. So basically, he uses <laughs> he uses uh, data analysis, AI, and all that stuff to yeah. for pattern recognition. And a lot of his uh, uh, customers are government contracts. Yeah, he did a lot of a lot of work with Ukraine right now with the war. Yeah, apparently. Homeland Security, I know for a fact, uses it. FBI yep. uses it. Most it major law enforcement agencies use it. Through the, their information, they found Osama bin Laden through the through his help. Supposedly, mm. it's been okay. hinted at. But point being, um, he wrote a book called "That Competition Is for Losers." Mm -hmm. And if you've ever studied economics, you've heard of something called perfect competition. Have you ever heard of that before? No, no I've never heard okay. that concept. So basically, it's a concept where in a perfect competition, a company really doesn't have to have profits or should not have profits. Mm. All right. And that makes sense. So, for example, I, let's take Essentials. It's a T-shirt brand. It, it does basics, right? It's hoodies, your basics. This is a, a company that's that has a lot of competition, right? Yeah. You could start a T-shirt brand tomorrow. Yeah. So can yeah. you. By the way, none of my stuff are drop shipped. I, I custom design everything. So everything. Okay. But you could if you wanted to. Now you have, you know how many hoodie and t-shirt and clothing brands there are everyone no, has a merch no, now correct no merch lines. right so let's say i was the first one that started a t-shirt brand it started at 100 bucks and let's say i'm making 50 percent profit on that right you're gonna come out and you're gonna place yours at 90 right mm -hmm. so now you're eating out of my profits because yep. now, now i need to compete with you yeah you see how that starts eating up your profits of course okay now you also have to factor in customer acquisition costs which is your marketing spend etc exactly. right so now i have to spend more because i'm competing against you yeah so you see how over time through perfect competition and more competitors entering a field Companies become unprofitable. Yeah, I yeah. absolutely see. Yeah, so, so the market goal, becomes too saturated. So it's bingo. Just, yeah. That's called perfect competition. So yeah. the goal, and that's why he talks about competition is for losers. You should not be in an environment that's, or you should not aim to try to scale something in an environment that's highly competitive because it's almost always going to lead to be unprofitable. Mm. Yeah, right? I like that. So for us, thankfully, we were profitable because we had a massive audience. So our customer yeah. acquisition costs are, are, are extremely low, low. Right? But if you're a regular... Joe Schmo, like a guy's watching that. Oh, I'm gonna go start it a T-shirt brand, huge YouTube channel, or something. Correct. Yeah. Or I'm gonna go start this. What's the point? You're, you're gonna lose money. You're gonna bleed most of the time. Yeah. Like 99 percent of the time. Yeah. Right? Like 80 percent of businesses are unprofitable. Like closed in a couple years. You Already. Know, right. Unprofitable in the beginning. And this is why business, at the end of the day, it should be solving an actual problem. Right. Yeah. A true problem. Mm -hmm. What's a discomfort that people have? What's a convenience that you can add for people, and that there is no competition in? That's mm -hmm. where you go in. And by the way, this also brings other problems that you have to deal with uh, in a market that doesn't exist yet. But again, that's another conversation for another time. But right. does that make sense? No, it, it absolutely does. Um, I, just very interesting because I've always been, you know, under the belief, you know, because we talked about this with Brandon Carter, like Ty Lopez, what he did was he bought a bunch of, um, you know, stores, retail stores like Pier 1 Imports, et cetera. Mm -hmm shut them down and move them online. So I figured, <laughs> okay, is this where retail is going? People are going to start putting more things online. It's not probably. Did he do I, I didn't know he'd done that. Yeah. He, yeah. He, he basically like bought them and bought them and then moved, uh, closed a lot of their branches and then mm -hmm. moved it online so people could purchase online. But 
I never thought about it from the other perspective where you could start online and then actually scale out into retail and brick it's and mortar. It's called Omni Channel. Okay. Uh, and it's probably the best uh, syndication of both. I don't, okay. I don't think it's just one or the other. Okay. No, I, yeah. I, that, that, that makes sense, man, because yeah. uh, when you do it that way, then you can properly kind of, you know, you know where your target market is more. You Correct. have the data from online. Okay. Yeah. Opening a store in New York City is probably going to be more profitable than opening one in Atlanta, for example. Absolutely. Mm. You know, Absolutely. versus having it the other way around. You've had your store there and then you're not getting as much traffic, but online kind of puts you in a position where you know where the buyers are coming from. So that makes sense. Bingo. Bingo. Damn. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, okay. Do you want me to, I could read, hit the chats real fast. Yeah. Um, we got beats by, um, and then we're gonna, don't worry, guys. We're gonna talk about relationships and all other stuff too. But this is the most, the more important stuff. God damn it! <laughs> I'm trying to get you guys to make money, bro. Like, yeah, man. That's important, man. Yeah, that's this is what and, this is about. Um, and, go ahead. And yes, no, sir. and for creators, it's so, uh, man. I talk to so many creators, man. Just other other content creators and stuff like that. It's so important to figure out how to scale your businesses because you know your 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 point of success is is usually short in a creator lifespan. Yeah, it's like yeah. athletes. It's yeah. like it's like celebrities. We're very similar in that method. You have a. It's very hard to to main, sustain uh, uh, relevancy over a long period of time. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult, and to do that, even though you might feel unmotivated, is hard. And that's why I talk about it. Uh, man, I can't tell you how many creators come to me and say, "Oh, I'm burned out." I don't believe in burnout, right? Mainly because I have felt it, felt it as well, and it, it should not impact uh, your output, mm -hmm. right? But uh, I talk to all these creators all the time that it's so important as a creator to figure out how to monetize different channels and create different products, create real solutions, and don't just base everything off of one basket of goods that you have. Yeah. Right. Because everything's fine and dandy when you're like right now, for example, you're blowing up, you feel it, right? Like, yeah. bro, you guys are, you feel invincible. But if you get canceled, yeah, especially that kind of content. Then it stops. You, you, know? you get canceled, and bro, I can't even imagine with you guys dealing with sponsors. I'm sure sponsors have have dropped you left and right, right? Yeah, I mean, we never dropped because um they kind of know what we what we're um what we're about. about. But uh yeah, we're definitely not going to be as um as marketable to a lot of sponsors because yeah, we're I, a little I, we're a little crazy. But, I mean, we've worked with Manscaped before, okay. great company. Um, yeah. and then we've also worked, which we actually you know we got to we, we'll talk after. Uh, <laughs> um, do but, I owe you money? Yeah, no, 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 too controversial yeah. and that's cool because like we've looked at it like we, you know i'm actually a real estate investor he's an investor himself so it's like for us it's like okay no no big deal we take our earned income and throw it into real estate yeah Smart. but uh you know Smart. for the tax benefits and everything else like that but but no for sure getting sponsors is is tougher for us than like other channels 100 yeah i can't channels, imagine, yeah. I can't so, even imagine. Uh, real quick i'll read these um we got uh okay uh you're fat that's a biological i think I don't know what that means at the end, but Fact. is Central Florida a good place to live when it comes to the cost of living, the girls and the job slash business opportunities? Um, cheaper than Miami, uh, decent looking girls, but um, I mean, I agree with uh, Jose. Go, go, that, like, where the money is, man. Yeah, New York is definitely, yeah. um, I would have moved there, but you'll be more motivated there. Shout out from Belgium. I'm only 18 and make 75K per year. Good job, my friend. Shout out to you. Uh, and then we got 10 bucks, beat, and that's Jonathan, Jonathan Wick. Beats by ISO. I haven't been able to catch y'all live as much lately because I've been out here grinding. Do you? For C retailers moving their stores to the metaverse and just shipping items purchased, we talk, just talked about that. Yeah, good question, Jose. Do you still have an yeah. uh, e equity position in Manscaped? Still do. Still, there you go. still a part, part owner. And then we got uh, Hood Rat, fifty bucks. The information that's being shared is insane. Jose never fails. Been watching since twenty seventeen. Helped me get my first job. Thank you, enough for all this information. What hey, the haters never appreciate bring up. that, man. Absolutely. So I got a question for you, bro. Go ahead. What made you get into YouTube? Because obviously speaking, like it was, it was, it was just a pure hobby. Like, that, that's what I was telling you um, at the time. It was just me posting content that I thought was relevant to me, right? Mm -hmm. Like, all right, how to dress better, whatever it was at the time. And at the time, by the way, never saw it as a business, never thought I could scale it into what it is today. Right. And ultimately, <laughs> I remember back in the day, I just wanted free product, bro. Back in the day, it was just literally, you would get a free hoodie or a free this just to do video. And again, I didn't have the money to buy a hoodie. So for me, a free hoodie was like, Crap, 50 everything. bucks. Yeah, like that was everything, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, at, at the time, it was really just a hobby. It was it was, it was, was a hobby until I figured out that I could make money. At what point do you know that you like blew up on YouTube? <clears throat> like, you know, it, was, video, uh, it was 2016. Viral. It was 2016, I still remember. And uh, I got I got my first sponsorship at the time. Like serious sponsorship. Like uh, I think it was a thousand bucks, right? But for me, that was like, oh, yeah, that, that, that's like that, that's, that was literally game changing money. I was severely in debt because I had another company. Uh, 
again, a 17 year old. My parents are immigrants. They had no money. So I started this company. Sink or swim. Yeah, sink or swim. Mm -hmm. I started this company and um, I had credit cards at the time and mm -hmm. I maxed out my personal credit cards. Mm -hmm. And then I, I pulled out credit cards against the company. I maxed out those credit cards. Oh, By the shit. way, the dumbest thing to do is fund your company with credit cards, right? Like yeah, that yeah. is like 30%. It's insane. Yeah. 17 at the time, I'm broke, but um, I make, or that, that year, I, I get a thousand dollar sponsorship and I'm like, holy crap, right? I was able to pay like a four, or I think I was down 15K or something like that. Mm -hmm. I was able to pay a 15th of it. I was like, damn, if I can do this 15 more times, I'm out of debt, <laughs> right? That was, and, and at the time I was working a, a, a copy job. I was a, a copy boy, right? Mm. And uh, so I remember as soon as I got that, it was like a spark. I go to, the, to uh, my boss and I'm like, you know, I'm gonna put my two weeks. I, I think I can make this happen. Mm. And it, it was just grind. It was, faith. Just grind. it was just grind, literally. After I saw that, it was like, yo, I would make these insane Excel sheets with hundreds of, of brands reach out, just closing. I became a salesman. I was closing mm -hmm. deals at 17, emailing the whole nine. Could you imagine if you made that mistake now where you're at versus back in the day with, with the debt? What do you mean? Like, for example, 15K in debt, which you had when you were younger, mm -hmm. right? You weren't successful yet. Yeah. Imagine making that mistake now when you're successful mm -hmm. and a big amount of debt. Like, you learn from the past, basically. Could I, could I do it again? Business. Yeah. Yeah. If I had to? No, in terms of like, regarding the business itself, right? You said you were in debt by 15K. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I'm saying in the future, right? You learned from that mistake. You know what? Don't use my credit card for business. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah. But I thought you were saying, would I get in debt again mm -hmm. if I have a vision? Right? Oh, yeah. I would, 100%. Okay. And it probably would be at a much larger scale, obviously, because 15K won't even pay the light bill. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I, I, I don't. At this point, I don't mind the pressure. I don't mind mm. going in debt. I don't mind losing it all again. Yeah. Because I could yeah. start all over again. But you learn yeah. like probably a bunch of valuable lessons from that first business that you're 100 percent Yeah. It's a hundred percent now, which is I think I think I've learned thing. more though in the last two years. Mm. Mm. In the last two years, scaling all the business that I have and everything that I'm telling you now and and living through it myself. I've talked to every industry leader you can think of, every guy that's owned hundred million plus, two hundred million plus dollar brands. I'm talking serious cash. Mm -hmm. It's insane how much you don't know. Yeah. It's insane how much you don't know. Jose, yeah. you know what we need, bro? What? We need a book. <laughs> a book? Yeah. Man. Well, your I don't life, know brother. I have time for that, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have uh, time for that. So you mentioned earlier um, relevancy with, with YouTube. It's very difficult to, um, you know, maintain that kind of like we're on the same time level as like athletes, right? Like you're blown up for a bit. Obviously, nope. you're not going to be blown up forever and always Correct. maintain that um, forever. Just, so you need to put that money into other things. Yep. And I do that personally with real estate. Um, you know, to hedge against if anything were to ever happen, especially since we make content that's extremely volatile, con volatile yeah, yeah, and controversial. Yeah, yeah. Um, for you, uh, what, what's your thoughts on, I guess, the niche of men's fashion and YouTube in general? I know, you know, you got guys like, you know, Alpha M, yeah, Alex yeah. Costa, et cetera. I've noticed that YouTube, uh, there's a lot of, I guess, genres that are kind of like, they don't get as many views as before. Yeah, like yeah. the fitness channels, for example, is Correct, another example thing. of this. Yeah, yeah same um, pranks too. Yeah, so what are your thoughts on uh, YouTube in general and like maintaining relevancy? Um, like I said, it's, it's, it's very difficult to do it yeah. over time and yeah. sustained over time. I actually had this conversation you know, to the late Kevin Samuels, I think we were talking about yeah. it. Uh, he, he passed by the office and we had that same conversation. It's so easy when, when, you're, when you're blowing up, right? Because it, it's something new, it's something fresh. Yeah. I'm sure you guys have already felt some of that because competition has stepped in, yes or no? A little bit, yeah. Right? A little bit, yeah. And, and these are just the be the beginning headwinds of it. Uh, but I'm like, you know, I'm competitive. I'm like, we're going to crush them. Oh, yeah. You no, want to come into our arena? To, you have to have we're that mentality. By the way, you have to have that mentality. We're yeah. playing for keeps, right? Like, no, this is not a charity event. Yeah. yeah. Right? So all those names that you named, those are great guys. Right? Like, I, I wish bad upon nobody. And I, by the way, I don't have to bring you down to build me up. Yeah. Yeah. But in my head, I got to beat you. Yeah. Right? I got to get more than you. Of course. I got to make more money than you. I got to scale bigger than you. I got to produce more than you. And, and and that's one thing that I've that I've seen that just staying relevant and staying consistent because so many YouTubers are easy to burn out. Facts. Mm. Right. So many. I have been posting every single day for five, five or six years. <sighs> think, just think about that. Yeah. Right. Um, last, I think, two days ago. No, I'm sorry. Two months ago, I upped it to two times a day. So now oh, I'm doing, shit. and this is just in English. So you also have to count Spanish. So we're talking yeah. about 21 pieces of content. Damn. And it's not also like, and everybody's like, oh, you should do a podcast because podcasts, you can just chop it up and do all those posts, yeah. right? Every single piece is a unique piece of content. Yeah. yeah. Right. Not, this also doesn't count all the, the content that I do for my companies, right? There's four companies. Every company has ads that I have to produce for them. Mm. There was at a point that we were producing, I think it was like 10 pieces of content per brand per week mm. on top, like the amount of production that we pump out is insane. Yeah. Insane. 
And it is that relentless workflow that I believe keeps you almost untouchable, right? Like even if views might come down a little bit, there's only a few top players, right? Yep. And as long as you're on top of that pyramid, you're chilling. The mm -hmm. brands still come in. People are still getting helped. New new audiences still come in. Yep. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I, I think it's just being relentless with the work, I think. Like yeah. not, just not letting go of the throttle because it's so easy to get demotivated. Again, I can't tell you how many times I've got calls like, yo, I'm burnt out. Yeah. Yo, it's not happening like I want it to happen. Keep pushing. Yeah. Mm. Keep that, pushing. Yeah. I, and I think that's, um, I think that's why it's also so important. Like uh, when, when you have competition, it keeps you motivated to like say, okay, well, I'm going to make, because people have definitely tried to enter our arena now where yeah. they bring girls on their shit and try to do shows or whatever. So I'm like, all right, cool. We're just going to up the production quality or people make hit, hater videos on us. I'll watch those sometimes, even though they always say don't read comments or look at haters, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I'll use it as fuel for motivation to be like, all right, we're going to prove y'all wrong. Like we went through some controversy last year yeah. and lost like 50 K subs. Yeah. And then now what was we that about? all those back. Some was bullshit it, was that happened with canceled? some haters. Yeah, it, hmm. yeah, that combined with some other like bullshit allegations. It's a long story, but um, in general, we're able able to like basically rebound like on a way fast level. Get lost those subs, gain them back within a couple of months, and then we've been you know just rocketing forward. Any other YouTuber would have been doomed at that point, bro. Like because yeah. I want so for example, right? I'm a big YouTube fan. I watch mm -hmm. YouTube all the time. Different okay. creators, Logan Paul, KSI, the type of hate that we got at that point in time. Most people would be crushed under under that hate, but we took it as, oh, you know 100%. what, we're going to work even harder, bring better guests on the show, better equipment, and we overcame it. But like most YouTubers would have been crushed, yeah. honestly. And I think that comes from that re that relentless attitude that you're mentioning. Because a lot of people, a lot of people move by emotion, right? That's what I was saying. I don't, I, I really don't believe in burnout. I don't believe like, if you feel sad, then this, uh, I, I recently did a video talking about this, how motivation is, is, is useless. Like motivation <laughs> is use. It's like a drug. It's like a it comes and goes. Yeah. It comes and Fleeting, goes. Yeah. Like I can hype you up right now in this podcast. Yeah. Yeah. And then you'll feel great tomorrow. You'll do Jack. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. You won't do anything tomorrow, but by the next day, all of it's gone. Yeah. The only thing that matters is your discipline. Yeah. Right. So I wake up, I, I go to the gym, I get my work done. Like what needs to happen, right? Like every single day. And, it, and then you wake up the next day and you do it again. Yep. No matter if you're tired, if you're sad, if you're depressed, if you're getting hit, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter. The work won't care, right? Your goals don't care about how you feel. Facts. Right? None of that matters. And, and, and I always try to push that into my audience that this discipline's all that matters. You stick to your discipline, everything else goes away. Consistency mm. plus time equals results. That's yeah. the equation for success. And I don't think people understand that you're going to live a fairly, to a degree, monotonous life if you really want to be successful because it's just yeah. constantly repeating the same actions over and over and over again longer oh. than your competition. Oh, and it's, 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 I, I wouldn't say it's boring, but it, it, can, it can take a mental toll. Yeah. And that's what I was telling you when it comes to competition. Like at the end of the day, it's just, you got to, you got to beat them. Yeah. Right. And it's similar if you if you've ever played sports or done any sort of endurance training, it's not until you're in like the deep end. Right. Like mm -hmm. when when the muscles start cramping up, the lactic acids building, your lungs can't breathe. Yeah. Those final seconds are, are what matters. Yeah. How hard can you push when it sucks? Yeah. Right. Because everybody else in their head is thinking, man, why am I doing this? When you start asking, why am I doing this? You've reached it. Mm -hmm. Right. This is when mm -hmm. this is when the race starts. Mm -hmm. Right. When you start asking, why am I getting up today? Why am I going to the gym? Why am I, I? I've said this so many times. I could probably work once a day, once a day a week, and probably make a million a year. Easy. Mm -hmm. And I'd be chilling, making yeah. a million a year. Yep. That's not enough for me. Yeah. Right? So the questions of why am I doing this always seep in. And when those questions, that's when you know you're in, you're in the deep end. Yep. Right? That's when the muscles are sore. Yep. That's and when we got to push harder. When I was, uh, mm. uh, I used to row in college and my coach always used to say, if you don't feel like quitting, you're not going hard enough. There you go. And, um, you know, it's, it's not about necessarily just like being able to withstand, you know, for, cause for me, I, I took that same discipline from like training with rowing in the gym and just applied it to life. And it's just, when it starts to hurt, that's when you count the reps. You know what I'm saying? Final. Yeah. yeah. You know, so it's like, <laughs> you don't sit there and be like, oh yeah, let me just, you know, go through it. And this feels good. It's like, no, you should feel extremely uncomfortable during the process because this, the most successful people, the only difference they have between people that are that are less successful than them is that their pain tolerance is higher to a degree. Whether they're willing to work more hours, they're willing to accept more pain, whatever it is, make more sacrifice. And and that is so true. And by the way, people don't under, I relate business so much to the gym yeah. and to sports. Facts. That's why I love the gym, right? Mm. When it sucks, when, when, your, when your muscles are tight, 
and you keep going, right? And you started squatting the other day, and yeah. it's like, oh, it, it, it now it's starting to burn. Okay, now I got it. Now I start going. You know what? You, you know how bad that is? Yeah, doing a hundred reps at two twenty-five. That's terrible. If you've ever done that, I have no terrible. idea. Terrible. My legs acid, are still sore. Yeah, lactic like acid still, burn. If you're not crazy. like laying on the floor because you've beaten yourself up, I don't think you worked out hard enough. And I do that mentally too, just because I, I feel like business is so similar to that. Yeah. Right. And going back to everything, the, the, the discomfort comes in every aspect of your life. Yep. So what, what does that mean? It's not only the mental toll that it's going to take. It's also the time uh, sacrifices that you're going to make. Right. I mean, you can talk to my parents when I was a kid. It was Christmas or it was it was Thanksgiving. I was still working. Mm -hmm. Imagine a 17 year old kid, bro, like going through it yep. when I was going through college that I was in debt and I was working. I, the, the, the question seeped in. Why am I doing this to myself? Yeah. Why, why am I not just a college kid? Mm -hmm. right? Having fun, partying, Having fun, partying. Yeah. Why, am yeah. I, why am I doing this to myself? Right. The question that question of why am I doing this to myself has happened almost always in my life. Right. And, and, and that brings me to who. I am and why I choose to live my life the way I do, right? Being married, being being disciplined in every single aspect of my life because I know what I want in life. Right? I know exactly where I want to be. Mm -hmm. And I know the sacrifices I have had to make my entire life, which I still have to make to this day, mm -hmm. right? Even with the family, I still have to work almost every day of the week. Mm -hmm. If I take a day off once a week, it's, it's a blessing, Yeah, honestly, right? But it is that discomfort on every aspect of my life that I that I'm willing to take and endure that most people aren't right most people aren't willing to do that yeah most people would rather vacation I mean you're hell you're hell you're in Miami right now for work you got right after this interview you got to run out and do some stuff 100%. you know what I mean so it, it's it, I think that the tenacity is something that a lot of people don't have and they need to understand that you need to be you need to get to a point where you're comfortable being uncomfortable yeah and that's yeah. when you're really going to thrive and you can't buy that either it's yeah. brought through despair or through ambition and it's because you want something for either your family, for yourself. It has to be greater outside of you than just I you. I think it's the despair, man. I think you, you you hit it on the nail. Yeah, That's what we were talking about. He's from Sudan. You're from Barbados. Yeah. I'm from Honduras. All, I think they're all third world countries, if I'm not wrong, right? Or, or pretty much... Yeah, Sudan is third world. Barbados is pretty. It's a poor it's, Caribbean it, island. Also, it's, silver platter. It's developed. Yeah, I would this, say this third world. Right, right, right. You don't count. You ain't born up here. Right here. Yeah. So when you do come from nothing, like the 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 amount of I, th I also talked about it about this in this video, right? Yeah. So we come from nothing, but we used to live in the in the hood, you know, when we lived in Florida. It was it was an underdeserved community, whatever well, you want to call West it. West Palm Beach. Yeah, mm -hmm. Riviera Beach. Yeah. Oh my oh, God. Rivera, yeah. Oh, Riviera Beach. Okay. Riviera Beach. Okay. Bro, run for the hills. Relax, <laughs> Barbados. Bro, this, this man was on the <laughs> island, bro. <laughs> Making fun of Riviera Beach. Making coconuts. <laughs> um, so, you know, but what I'm saying is, to me, that wasn't it wasn't that bad. Why? Because where you come from is worse. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. No, so, that, so that's why I always say anybody that, that was born here, I don't care what skin color you are. Yep. You're already an advantage. Bam. Facts. You got everything. Said all the time. Right. You got everything you need. It doesn't, it, it, your color doesn't matter. It just, and I hate hearing that, that excuse. Yeah. Right. Cause I'm too dark or I'm, I'm span. Bro, my parents didn't even know the damn language, bro. Yeah. Like mm. they didn't even know how to speak the language, yep. man. My mom, and I always talk about this just for perspective wise. So not only do I come from a third world country, my mom comes from a village, bro. Like not a town, not a city, a village in a third world country. You know what that looks like? Huts. Shit. Huts. Yeah. Dirt road. Yeah. I could have been playing soccer in a dirt road. Yeah. That could have been my outcome. No yeah. shoes. No shoes. I think they, I think my mom got running water like when she was like in her teens. Wow. Right? Like that type of village. Yep. Just one generation ago. Yep. You have everything. You have AC, you have running water, you have a toilet, you have food, you have you have a roof. You got everything you need. What's your excuse? Yeah. You got everything you need. The the the, the entitlement and the, you know, just pussy mentality of so many people that live here, you know, people have the the, the goal. Here's the thing. they'll be like, "Oh, fuck the United States or the, all this other bullshit." In my head I'm like, "Listen, bro, we're not perfect." Bro, but this is. Don't the, get me there's people that, that fucking <laughs> die to come here, and I, and I've seen it, man. I've, and, I've I've seen Hondurans come when I was uh, an agent with Homeland. I've seen eight uh, um, Hondurans die on their way to try to come into the United States in Mexico in trucks. I could tell you stories from my own family, Joshua. bro. What? No, like I mean, I, I don't want to expose them, but like yeah. I'm telling you, like it's it's serious, and and we're talking serious stuff happens when they try to cross that border, facts for a better life. And two things on that: one, especially if you're an immigrant and you're watching this. One of the reasons I'm so hungry, and I always say this, every decision and risk that I take, you ask me, would I risk it all again? Yeah. I, I, I would. I, I, I don't care. Because everything that I do pales in comparison to what my parents did, right? Mm. Them, Facts. my mom coming from a village that doesn't speak the language, 
to move to America, just put that into perspective. That would be like us moving to what? France. Yeah. Right? With zero money, with nothing, and starting from scratch, not even knowing the language. Mm-hmm. And, and by the way, we have the internet now that, that could help us. Exactly. Imagine Google translator shit. Yeah, imagine yeah. back in the back day. Then. Yeah. That's the biggest risk you could have ever taken. Right? So me moving to New York, oh, pussy. Yeah. <laughs> that, 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 those are pussy moves, literally. Mm, yeah. Like, it's not even that serious. When you put it into perspective, yeah. it's not that serious. So every risk that I take pales into comparison with what my parents did for us. And for us to throw away that risk that they did, yeah. Slap in their face. Facts. Mm. To slap in their face. My, right? my parents always used to tell me if I was born in the United States, I'd be a doctor, I'd be a lawyer, you fucking pussy. Like, you know, 100%. You, better, you better be a fucking somebody. I didn't come to this country for you to be a fuck up. 100%. And I was like, 100%. Constantly, every day. 100%. And you got to go through pain because here's the thing a lot of people don't go through pain, so they don't understand what pleasure is like. You know what I mean? They that's just the think problem, pleasure man. is the norm, and that's a, that, that's a problem. You need to that's the really get punched in the face by life multiple times that's the problem. to be able to appreciate the benefits. I think yeah. leaving your comfort zone is important. It's like for me, uh, I need to say Barbados might be thorough. It's, it's kind of developed, <laughs> but I was coming to back home, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Family's there, taken care of. It felt like I was being coddled too much. But when I left my comfort zone, I came to America. Mm-hmm. I didn't know anybody. I didn't know anything. I was pretty much jobless. I had to find a job right away. I had to work on myself for credit scores, all that stuff. I'm being in Do do Barbados? They speak English, or is it a different? It's language? English, but it's very fast paced. So for example, okay. I can say, let me, "Let me go down there." It's like Jamaican, so it's like a broken English. What did I just say? I mm-hmm. have no idea what the hell you said. So I said. <laughs> Let me go down there. Have a good day. <laughs> I said, let me go down there. Oh, which means, well, let me go down there. Let us go down there. Yeah, oh, there, see, so you got his roommate, bro. It's kind of fast, broken English. But I say that to say, when you leave a comfort zone, it's a new level of like challenge. And that mm-hmm. challenge, most people need it because in America, people are comfortable. Dude, you go to work, sorry, you go to school, you, you get a degree, you go to work 40 years, you retire. That to me is crazy because if you're stuck in a cubicle for 40 years and then that's it and you die. Pretty much either alone or with some. The point is that, like, that comfort that people have, if you, you had your experience or my experience of being an immigrant coming here with a family, you would, you would not even look at that as an option. Yeah, no. And, and by the way, you said retirement. And, and I think that's also funny. People have yeah. asked me, like, when do you plan, plan on retiring? <laughs> Never. <laughs> Never. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. Ever. Mm-hmm. Till I can't make a thought. Mm-hmm. Like, that's just not the idea of me being in a beach, just laying down, doing nothing, drives me insane. Well, I've tried it. Insane. <laughs> Bro, retirement kills you. I have been around the world. Every vacation you can think of, right? Mm. Still doesn't matter. Nicest hotels you can think of, doesn't matter. Mm. My vacation is two, three days max. And I'm mm. itching. Mm. I need to get back. Right. Yeah. This is what I do. Like this, th- this is this is what I like. Yeah. You know? And by the way, that 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 doesn't have to be everybody, right? We understand that there, I mean, it is, statist- it is statistically impossible to be a one percenter. Yeah. Statistically, yeah. there has to be the 99%. Yeah. And if you look at it, it's funny because, you know, right now I, I would say I'm working the hardest I've ever worked in my life. Mm-hmm. I, I'm under the most pressure I've ever been right now. Right. Um, if you go on TikTok, for example, mm-hmm. what's the current sentiment in our generation? <laughs> right. F work. Yeah. Quit. Yeah. Right, Torque. work-life balance, yeah. Torque. right? Like, no more. It's the idea of working and scaling. Anybody that that, that prioritizes scaling something is looked at less than, mm-hmm. right? Than prioritizing happiness. Yeah. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. Prioritizing experiences and emotion. <laughs> Which, by the way, again, it's all fine. You're you're you are okay and entitled to do that. But when I hit a billion dollars, I don't want to hear that I'm greedy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't want to hear that I'm evil exploiting my workers or x whatever bs they come up with against billionaires yeah because while i was under that stress you were on a beach yep right you, you were should, posting you on, should give to the poor <laughs> you should donate to this charity and, and by the way the hell do you know if i'm i'm doing that yeah. exactly because i don't post everything i do yeah especially yeah. charity work i think that's cheesy to me yeah. mm-hmm. i'm not gonna post every time i give something mm-hmm. don't worry about that what about yourself yeah Right. But but that's what I'm saying. At the end of the day, it's statistically impossible for everybody to be a one percenter. Nice. That's the reality of it. But what we, what I think what we do and what we can do is for those that do want to beat in the one percent. Yeah. Show you what it really will mean. It ain't pretty. Right. Mm-hmm. It's not unless you're getting the money illegally or it was inherited. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. It ain't going to be you partying all the time. Supercars. Your money will run out. Yeah. Unless right. you don't figure out how to create it, generate it, multiply it. All that matters. And by the way, it's not as easy as it looks. Yeah, hundred percent. Right. Um. So you mentioned being a one percenter, which kind of is a perfect transition over. <laughs> <laughs>
Can you tell us about the dating market uh, place in your experience? I know that you make a lot of videos on male self-improvement, like dressing better, everything else like that. But you also make a bunch of videos on how to be a Damn. more attractive guy. Um, mm -hmm. What's your general view, I guess, on the dating marketplace in today's day and age and, and between men and women in general? So, I mean, I've, obviously, I've seen your content. I see what yeah. you say. Uh, I think it's relevant for the type of women that you guys associate associate with, right? So like, for example, if you guys are, I've always, and I've said this in my videos, right? If, if you're picking up girls in the club mm. and she's twerking at you, if you're thinking, man, this is going to be a great mom, you're a dumbass. <laughs> right? like, bro, like, like, Stupid. And I've said that in my videos, right? Like wherever you're picking them up, like if you're if you're picking them up at a festival and they're half and, and let's say they're half naked, they are entitled to do that. But you have to understand that this is a woman that seeks male validation. That's what they like. Mm -hmm. That's what that type of girl likes, mm -hmm. right? On average, right? You can do a blank, but on average, that's what that's what the, sure. that girl likes. Yeah. Um, I do think as a, as a man, it is getting increasingly harder. And mm -hmm. I talked about this also. The competition's heavy, especially with social media. Yeah. Uh, what they see now is the top of the top of the top. Whereas what my parents had to deal with, let's say, or even mm -hmm. 20 years ago, you only dealt with the 10 to 20 people you knew in your social circle. Yeah. So you only had to be the 1% of 20 guys, yeah. right? To get most of the play. Yeah. Today, you have to be the 1% of the world type of thing, <laughs> right? Or the 1% of Miami or the 1% of New York City, Yeah. right? If, if, if you're broke or if you're short, or if you don't have enough confidence, there's a hundred other guys that can take that spot. Yep. Like this, yep. if not faster, yep. right? And, and, and I was telling you about this, you know, when I met my wife, if you ever date a pretty girl, mm -hmm. go through her DMs. <laughs> yep. Go through her. And, Blue I, and check marks. By the way, I've, I've told guys this all the time. The mentality you should have when you reach out to this girl is not that you're special, is that she has 100, 200 guys in her DMs. And if she's really pretty, mm -hmm. they're verified. So now you're competing with different type of men. Yep. Right? Um, so it is heavily heavily competitive for most men especially in big cities if you're in rural america or in suburbs helps a bit you'll be off you know you'll be better off uh but in a bigger city yes you massively know, competitive you know it's funny though we see all the time on the show instagram is one of the biggest dating apps in the world and you know why competition so for example right like you said earlier a guy could be in i don't know texas miami vegas right but the girl is in idaho mm -hmm. she's never experienced the lifestyle of like yep. being flown out to miami yep. new york dubai the point is that like for her, the opportunity to go to places like that and it be paid for all inclusive, mm -hmm. she's gonna go for it versus the guy next to her, her neighbor. Oh, you wanna go for dinner down, down the block? <laughs> it's yeah. like, who's she gonna choose? So yeah, yeah. you're right, it's competition all the time and the best man will win. So my thing is that you preach as well, become the best version of yourself so that when you get the chance to approach a girl or whatever, you know what, you're her best option. I, I've said that too. I think TikTok and Instagram. I don't know if you guys use TikTok, but TikTok is- We're banned. But yeah, we're banned. You guys are banned? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> God damn, bro. Seven we've times. Had, bro. Like, Seven uh, we've times. Had, like, yeah, we've had like, yeah. Like, All right. Like, never mind that. But uh, I, I would just even, repost our content on there. I but. would even say, and I've, I've said this in my, in my videos, I, I think TikTok is an even more powerful platform because uh, mm. uh, right now on Instagram, usually what you see is a bunch of Instagram models verified, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 If you want to if you want to deal with that type of woman, any girl over 50K, you you better be verified or some, <laughs> some dude with money. <laughs> like, said, no, we spoke no, about no, this last night. Yeah. Expectations Listen, here, bro. Like, I'm, I'm gonna give you a secret. Chat niggas, here's a secret. <laughs> we don't DM. It was, look, it has to be less than 2K, 2K Yo. followers for us to well, even you, take it serious. Well, that Yo. you can find through TikTok. Uh, TikTok, <laughs> the algorithm is great showing up, up and coming creators. So, you know, if you, uh. if you guys need play, TikTok, oh, TikTok's the best. TikTok's a beast. If, if you want uh, <laughs> up and comers, yeah, TikTok. Because, you know, when you deal with people with over 50K, uh, they've been hit, hit oh up. my god, they've been invited they, to Dubai. That and, you know, and, and, and if you don't have the confidence for it, they think they are better than you. Top, you know, top dollar type. Of stuff, I, I right? would argue if you take an average girl, she's gonna think she's better than ninety five percent of men. If you take just even an average chick, so yeah. it's it's tough, man. You guys gotta really. I, I've P's never, I, I've never felt that personally. Mm -hmm. You're one percent. Yeah, yeah, you're one percent. I, I can't. I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> with you. I've never felt in a, in a situation where the woman felt she was better than me. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't even think I would stand for that, to be honest. No, I, 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 I would get same. up and leave. Yeah, get the hell same. out of here. Yeah, I, I wouldn't like, even yeah. go into that. Because it's just disrespectful, by yeah. the way. Um, so, so, uh, so you make a lot of videos as far as like you know uh, things to do on a day, top five things yeah. to be attractive, etc. From and, and these obviously these videos were created from a root problem. What would you say are the top things? It could be you know two things, four, four things, five things mm -hmm. that you think guys fuck up when it comes 
to dealing with the ops agenda? Hygiene? Uh, no. <laughs> what are the top five uh, things that you could think I, of? I, I, I always, the number one thing, the number one thing is desperation. Okay. Uh, I like that. In other words, their lack of options is palpable. Mm. Like you can, the way you act when you don't have options and you only have one mm -hmm. is what ruins everything. Yeah. Mm. Right? You become needy. You become clingy. You over obsess over one single woman, right? And, and again, most of the videos that I do is usually for the average guy, right? Yeah. I, I really don't do dating for like top 1% or yeah, dating for big cities. I think that's what you guys mostly focus on. Yeah, we I'm tell wrong. guys they need to get to get right? into a certain demographic to even be able to stand a chance, yeah. you know, in certain marketplaces. But, you know, for sure, uh, your videos have great uh, context for like a large majority of guys. Correct. So mine is, I, I would say to the, the guy that's 18, let's say to 25, that's your average dude that just, you know, yeah. he just wants a girlfriend. Yeah. Which that's the problem that most guys deal with, right? Yeah, sure. The problem is that, you know, it's so easy for, let's say, us that once you start making money, that the idea of just getting a girlfriend is not that difficult anymore, right? Be just yeah. just because you have access to it. Yeah. But the average guy is still battling. You know, he's still a regular dude with a job at McDonald's or a job at Starbucks, and all he all he wants is validation, or all he wants is some some chick to connect with, right? Yeah. Uh, that's basically who I I, uh, I I target my my content for, and I would say, like I said, number one is is, is probably desperation, scarcity, scarcity mindset. That, that agreed. Oh, I think that's a better terminology. Yeah. Scar scarcity mindset. Yeah. You know, um, anything after that, I always talk about is is focusing on themselves, right? So mm. once you take the focus of I want Vanessa or mm -hmm. Sophia, because usually their whole life revolves around that one individual, yeah. right? Because they're so obsessed, and you take it to what can I do to better myself? Your world just kind of shifts around, right? So for example, if you're a guy that's going through medical school or a lawyer or an entrepreneur or whatever it is, or you're an athlete and you fully focus on becoming an athlete, right? Like just killing it in that area. And then you fully focus on going to the gym. Mm -hmm. And then you fully focus on, on, on building up your wardrobe. You end up becoming that 1% of your social circle, Yep. right? Of that university, of that high school, of that whatever you are. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you tackle those like other four aspects of your life, which yeah. would be your career, your style, your hygiene and your charisma, all of which anybody can deal with. Absolutely. You're on lock. Yep. That's it. That's all you got to do. Right. Yeah. Stop being desperate. Work on those four. And that's pretty much the gist of my entire content. And if you add some money to it, sheesh. Yeah. You well, well, that's balling. why I put number two as your, your career. Right. Because yeah. like I said, not everybody can be an entrepreneur. That's that's yeah. unrealistic. Yeah. Right. Not Understood. everybody can be a doctor. Not everybody can be a lawyer. Not every. But everybody can be somebody, mm -hmm. right? You could be an engineer. You could be a, a, a computer scientist, a mm -hmm. developer, right? There's so many other avenues to take that will yield you six figures plus that will get you in that top at least five to 10%. Mm -hmm. You know, you're already scarce, mm -hmm. right? And once you have that value, you walk a little bit different. Too, yeah, right? Absolutely. Right? You walk with like that chip on your shoulders no longer there, mm -hmm. right? You're no longer desperate. You're no longer trying to like, uh, or, or have that need for validation from women. Because a lot of men, it's also that, right? Because they lack so much, they need a girl to tell them that they're hot yeah. or that they're attractive or whatever it may be, yeah. right? You don't need that anymore because you know your value. You know just how valuable you are as a man in, in, a, in a bigger uh, environment. I went on a rant on this that went like super viral. And I, and I was basically saying with not as, uh, <laughs> it was with some choice words that you as a man, your value is not dictated on the chick you can get. Your value is dictated by the market and what you create. And then a byproduct of that value of what you create for the market is the women come to you. But a lot of guys base their male value on how many girls can I get? What's my lay count? All this shit. Fuck that. No. But, what can you create? And then now the chicks come to you. That's what dictates your market value. Not a, not a chick. A hundred percent. And But I, I would also add, and that's Please. why I added those four things, right? Where it's like, yes, you know, being jacked, good, right? Being, uh, having all this stuff is good. But if you don't have game, if you can't yeah. talk, if you're still awkward, facts, you're, you're effed. You could be a millionaire. That's a loser. Facts. You know, it's funny. I mean, so many girls, right? Here in Miami, especially. And they're like, yo, this guy has money, but he's weird. He's lame. I can't be around him because he's too thirsty. And it's funny because that character that you build from becoming who you are, it does work in business, but you have to work on it regarding yourself for dating as well. That's yeah. why I added charisma to the bottom, right? Yeah, like yeah. that is that is so crucial. And a lot of guys leave that out. Mm -hmm. I always I, I always talk about this exercise for guys to do uh that don't because if you don't have charisma, you have to work on it, right? There's no five hack and then you're charismatic. Yeah. Right? You have to you work really on do. it. Yeah. So I always give this this uh exercise for guys to do where it's uh, every day, force yourself to talk to one new girl. 
they yeah. pick up, right? So just anywhere, yeah. coffee shop, library, uh, gym. And I, when I say gym, go to different hours, right? So if you go at five o'clock, you won't see the same people you, you'll see at five in the morning. I talk about this all the so time too. So go yeah. at different hours uh-huh. so you don't run into There's the same- crowds. Yeah, yeah the, the you don't run crowds. into the same girl. Um, and just start up a conversation. The first 10 times is gonna be weird. And I always say, the only rule is you can't ask yes or no question, right? So don't say, do you come to the gym often? Yeah, right? Like, like force yourself to ask open-ended questions. And again, the first 10 times, mad weird, right? Mm-hmm. But the more you do this on a daily basis, you're gonna desensitize yourself from talking to chicks. Yeah. And you're gonna see what works and what doesn't work. And over time, you're gonna develop that charisma that you need. So when you do have everything else, you're unstoppable, man. You know what's funny about this too? Back in the day, like, I know I have a stutter, right? It was way worse back then, like when I first came to America. And my first year, I didn't go out partying and none of that stuff. I worked myself, you know, made some money. But after that second, the, the first year, I, went, I started going to parties, right? Mm-hmm. And at the parties, I was scared to death. I was super nervous. So mm-hmm. for me to talk to girls, I was like, yo, I'm going to stutter. I'm going to fuck up. But I need to do it anyway. Mm-hmm. But my homeboy, he's from Jamaica, shout out to Carl. He would go and effortlessly just talk to girls. Rejected. Okay, cool. Next one. Next one. I was like, hold on a second. He's going into it, failing and still going. I'm going to give it a shot. Yeah. I have to see him fail so many times and just keep going. Yeah. I tried it. And trust me, I sucked as hell. I sucked really bad. Yeah. It was terrible. But eventually I got one. Yeah. Then two. Then three. And I was like, you know what? I can feel and still win. Yeah. And that confidence comes over time. Like you said, it doesn't happen overnight, but over time when you put in reps and you put in effort, you get results. Yeah, man. When, when you're at the bottom of the bear, it's a numbers game. Yeah. yeah so that's the only way. With you, um, so you were able to take that ambition <laughs> and drive in. And you got yourself a, you know, a, a girl and yeah. uh, you ended up getting married. How do you choose her? Okay, hold on. Yeah, Just real ahead. quick. You're a successful guy. Yeah. You're on the way up, yeah. right? How do you choose her over every other girl? Because obviously speaking, you got options. Yeah. Yeah. So what made her so over? I, I was, talking to Myron about this, mm-hmm. um, it's so hard when you do have money. Yeah. Because it, it gets to a point that you start feeling that, and, and, and I'm sure you guys have felt that, right? Yeah. That every girl that's with you is really with you because of what you got, right? Well, actually, they, she likes me, me for me. Stupid. But for real, yeah, like yeah. for most of the part, yeah. you know it's that wow factor, yeah, right? Yeah. This guy has the nice car, and I've always had nice cars too, right? L- so, lifestyle. Yeah, it's a nice car, nice home. That, so you know that, bro, every, how many times has a girl hopped into your car and been like, wow. Like, what do you do, right? Like, it's you're for him. He's the one with the Lambo. Yeah, like <laughs> it, 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 it's part of that, right? <clears throat> Not with her. Mm-hmm. I like, it just didn't matter with her. There was no wow factor with my money. Mm-hmm. There was no. That's the first thing <laughs> they said to. Him? Yeah, La- last night. Yeah. <laughs> and they were taking pictures. No. Yeah. 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 There you go. Yeah, so, so, a, now yeah, you, oh, yeah, so now you yeah. know they don't like you for your personality. They like you for your money, bro. <laughs> Well, I didn't want one so, thing, so. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You know, but you at least you know yeah. not to wife that, right? Because yeah, that's yeah. going to yeah. be a mess down the road. Facts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, my, that, you know, my girl at that time, mm-hmm. she wasn't like that. Mm-hmm. And I really, like, you can, it, it's palpable. You can feel it. Like, it, she just didn't care it's about different. that at that time. Mm-hmm. And she was so hyper-focused on her career and, and, and growing and, and, and whatever her goals were at the time that I, I really found it valuable. I was like, man, like her mentality is so different than every other woman. You know, she had a traditional mentality also, right? Where she did want a family. <laughs> I remember at the time she told me she wanted six kids mm. at the time, bro. I mean, she's changed her mind now because it's, 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 tough. T- it's tough raising yeah. kids, man. But, uh, you know, it, it was a series of things that I saw and I was like, I, I really like this in this girl mm. that you just don't find on top of she's beautiful. She was built exactly like I wanted her to be mm-hmm. built you know, right in all the right places type of thing, you know, mm-hmm. um, with the right personality that didn't party all the time, right? That wasn't all over the place. Mm. That's rare, man. That was rare to me. That was like, you don't find this. Yeah. I'm locking this down. She she right. went to, she, she went to Harvard. Um, she went to Harvard and, uh, you know, and I think that's, that's a good thing. Cause we always talk on this podcast, how, you know, a woman's career isn't like the biggest thing for guys like us, you know, we do well, whatever, you know? Oh. So it's like funny you say that. So yeah. I, I, I remember at the time, uh, that was one of the things that I told her. I was like, I, I could care less what you are. Like, Bam. I, 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 <laughs> no, like I, it really doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying that I'm telling her not to. Yeah. Like I, I do want her to pursue her goals, yeah. but she could have been a nurse, a pharmacist, a work at uh, Starbucks. It wouldn't have mattered to me, yeah. right? Because I wasn't looking for a girl to provide for me. Yeah. Right. Right. And that's why for most men, it doesn't matter what your career mm-hmm. is. It's interesting thing. Because you mentioned that she wasn't out there or whatever like that. And I think... Which is some, what I like the most about the fact that instead of wasting her time being, let's say, a whore and just, you know, partying and do, she was wasting her time building herself up. Bam. And bam, I was just going to say that. Hyper, hyper valuable. And that, for the guys out there to, to, um, to, to learn from this is that 
you don't necessarily care about her career. You care that she was preoccupied doing something that kept her away from doing stupid shit. Yeah, and yeah. I think it was uh, mature decisions. Yeah. And of I course. think guys need to understand that, that like, you know, wh when you're vetting for girls, you got to make sure that she has things that keep her preoccupied from doing stupid things. Because my rowing coach always used to say this idle hands do the devil's work. Yeah. Too much free time is not, is going to lead to a bad time for you down the road. Yeah. And with your girl, you know, obviously she was very ambitious. She was going to school at Harvard. Yep. Uh, that, Which, by the way, another thing that I really liked about her that was rare yeah. um, is her understanding. So like I told you, I, my work ethic is insane. My schedule is insane. Like I'm out of the house before she's even up, right? Mm -hmm. She only gets to see me about an hour or two at the end of the day. I was about to ask you that. Right? So she's super under. And if I ever tell her like, babe, I'm, I'm, I'm backed up. I'm stressed out right now. She'll be like, that's okay, honey. Stay in work. Okay, honey, you need to work more. Right. Like she's super. And by the way, I don't think I mean, you guys probably do understand how rare that is, whereas most yeah. women want your attention. Facts. Back in the day Dude. when I was dating, I'm so focused on my work. I would forget your name. I would forget <laughs> to text text you. Right. So for and most of the time, it was, you know, give, give me attention. Give me this. Give me that. Oh, we should spend more time. To, it was. Oh, but with her, it was different. Right. With her, she understood what I needed to until this day does. Yep. And supports me throughout every single time. Right. When I said I want to move to New York City, she's like, okay. Right. She's like, what are the pros and cons? Like, she, she like, let's do it. Yeah. She, like, she never, you. she's, I don't never think questions she's you. ever has she like confronted me and like, I don't want to do that. Yeah. You right? know, you know, it's one trait I feel like most high value guys don't talk about much in women that we really need. Uh, understanding women understands your lifestyle because they can say, yeah, I understand it for a period of time. And then, you know what? Oh, yeah. I don't like this. But when you really understand it and they get it, that helps you be trimmed. You know what happens? You just said something clear. <laughs> yeah. You find a girl like that that understands your lifestyle, it'll help you move forward um, even better. Because yeah. if, if you don't, why are you here at this time? Should why do drag. you come home? Like, yeah. I need time like, to you travel. Just, you just said something very clear. Yeah. A lot of women will say they understand your lifestyle first, right? Because you have all the money, mm -hmm. right? So, like, oh, yeah, I understand it now. But they don't know what it entails to actually, actually be. Work. It's what we were talking about, right? It's this constant grind that's. It's almost mind numbing it never and ends. it's repetitive and it never ends. Yeah. She understood it and, and, and she understood it because she she had to go through it herself to get into where she was. Mm. Right. So she related with it so well where she's like, no, I get you have to work. When I told her I don't, don't want to retire. No, I get it. Right. And the other girl would be like, oh, take me on a vacation. When are we going on vacation again? When I tell her, babe, I, I, I don't like vacations that much. Yeah. And I love Same. spending time with her, by the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's an amazing woman. But but I need to work. Right. And she, and she just fully comprehends that and that to me was so valuable yeah because it's 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 rare it's hard like, to find you that, don't bro. have an, uh, you you don't find women like that that support you so much and understand exactly what you're going through so you had some interesting um because you know we normally don't advocate for marriage on this channel mm -hmm. as, you, as you know because just of all the dangers that come in yep. but you took some very interesting steps to mitigate risk in 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 your uh relationship in your marriage for the guys out there you know that you know are working on their grind and thinking about getting a girl uh, what are some of the boundaries that you put up to, and you know, to ensure success in a relationship? So, um, I always talk about this. I think any healthy relationship is, it, it's respect is foundational, right? Yeah. And it's a two way street, right? Yeah. I'm going to respect her as my wife, uh, as she should respect me as her husband. Mm -hmm. Uh, for example, one of the things that I was, I, I always told you is like, she had a bunch of DMs, a bunch of dudes <laughs> in her DMs, right? So famous people too, guys, <laughs> big dudes. But the first thing that I told her when we started dating. I'm follow block. I don't. I don't want. I don't want you following guys without hesitation. Mm. Okay, Tra. with like uh, you don't see that. You don't find that this girl is so like. But why? Huh? I can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't have friends. Yeah. yeah. Hold yeah. on. You're controlling. Yeah. You're insecure. But massage oh, me. <laughs> another thing. By the yeah. way, my girl is she's built perfectly, bro. She's beautiful. She has a body on her. Go mm -hmm. find one picture of her half naked. Go look for it. Mm. I dare you. Anywhere on online. Mm -hmm. Can't find it. Won't. And that was before me even coming into the picture. Right. So her moral her morals were insane. Yeah. Mm. She didn't she didn't need to use her body. Right. And most of these girls that post naked, and again, you're you are more than welcome to post half naked, <laughs> right? But you as a guy need to understand that if that's who you end up cuffing, right? Oof. This girl likes male validation. Yeah. Because girls aren't posting that. Because they're empowering their body. Because if that was the case, go post it on Tumblr. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Go post it on, I've said this on my video, go post it on Pinterest. You won't do that. 
they post it there because they want the likes from the guys. Yeah. They want the comments. And if a girl's ever open for male validation, if any guy seeps in that might be higher value than you, or, and again, for example, in, in, in my case, right, I'm the type of guy that works a lot, right? And, and I try to give my girl as much attention. And by the way, that's because I want to. I genuinely want to give her attention. I also have a daughter that I love yeah. above everything else. Mm. So I genuinely want to spend time with them, right? But I also understand that I'm, I'm, I might be a little absent on some occasions because I'm working a lot. So when you're in this case, it's so easy for another guy to come in, Facts. right? Yeah. And, and, and give a little of emotion, right? You know how guys are. I'm the friend. I'm the, right? So if, if, if the girl already has that tendency of wanting male validation mm. and you're in a situation like that. Add that to the mix. Correct. Add that to the mix. You're in a situation like that and she's posting for, for validation and one of those guys just seeps in that just is the right guy. Boop. Oh, you look like a dumbass. Yeah. Mm. Right. Yeah, and I think that that's that's a, a so that's a good point. Um, what was it, there was another um, were there other steps that you implemented before you? Uh, I, she had to take I mean, your last name. I know yeah, that was there was there was a lot of things. Um, and again, just so I always, the guys can learn. Yeah, I always talk about that in videos. You know, again, it goes back to that number one desperation, right? Yeah. I have boundaries that I have in my life as a man that I think should be respected. Yeah. I'm not telling you that you should agree with them because if you do not agree with them, that's okay. Yeah. Right. You don't have to be my girlfriend. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? But most guys don't have that mentality yeah. and they're scared of saying, oh, don't do that because of, oh, she might get mad. You might lose her. You might lose her. <laughs> right. And that's the problem. That desperation is what leads guys to being so needy and, you know, getting bamboozled all the time. Bro, you, you look dumb. Yeah. You know, so I just have a lot of boundaries. I, I think clear communication is, 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 is key. Right. Where it's like, this is what I expect. Yep. Yeah. This is what I want. Right. And, and then she can say yes or no. Yeah. I want kids. Yeah. I want this. I worry. Right? And, and, and you need that clear communication. Most guys don't have that again because of that fear that you might lose her, that you say something that she might not like. But if she doesn't like that and that's something you want, then that's not, not that's not the girl for you. Yep. That's not the girl for you because it's going to cause you headache once you stop thinking with your penis. Yep. Right. Okay. That's the problem. But most guys are so horny because <laughs> they don't get enough mm -hmm. that they only think with their penis. And then it's too late. Years down the road. Is that you meet a chick that's really bad, you forget everything else. Oh, oh she's just God. bad. You just go for it. Versus the chick that's actually going to help you with your business, help you go for in life. She may be like a seven or six, but she's willing to put an effort to make you grow. Versus the, the 10, oh, take me on vacation, take me shopping. What are you going to choose? But I think for you, what I learned from your, um, your, your spill here is that like the girl, her willingness to like change or to adapt to your standards, me say, so you know what? She's willing to submit on these levels. I can take her serious. And by the way, a lot of her morals were already ingrained too. Right. right? She like, comes from a two parent household? Comes from a, and we can have that conversation too, man. Like, it depends on how much. I, it's 2 30. I know you're tired yeah, on time. It's about to, Jose. So let's roll 15 more minutes and then okay, we can. Uh, cool. cool. And then we can close it off. Um, but yeah, I mean, a two parent household is so crucial. Right. Yes. And by the way, that's also a responsibility that I have. Mm -hmm. Right. You ask me, do I cheat? I do not cheat. Right. Because I, I, I am of that mentality that how you do everything is how you do anything, mm. right? So if I told her I'm going to be loyal, that's the man that I am. Now, I'm not saying that you can't, if you're the type of guy that wants to have multiple girls, that's fine. Yeah. But most of these guys have open communication, right? Like, yeah, be honest hey, about by it, the way, which is what we say. Because otherwise, you know, you're a puss too. Like you're, you're lying. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so if I told her, this is what I'm going to do, that's what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right? And then on top of that, I have a responsibility as a father, especially a person of color, because we know by every statistic, the one of the biggest reasons that people of color underperform in every metric is from single parent households. Facts. And, yeah. uh, and that responsibility falls here too. Yeah. Right. Where we end up, bro, especially Latino communities, man. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, you too, bro, we reproduce like bunnies, bro. Like, <laughs> yo, <laughs> it's not even a joke, man. Like kids everywhere. So but where's the dad, bro? Where's the dad? Yeah. So now you raise weak men and girls that need validation because the dad wasn't there. Yeah. Right? That two-parent household is so key. And that's that's another responsibility that I have to set forth, not only for my wife, but for my kids. Because yeah. I want to raise a generation of kids that that's solid. I want strong men. I don't want weak men, bro. And yeah. I have to be there for that. Yeah. And then I, I, I want smart women, too, that ain't going to get played by some dude. And I mean, obviously, my daughter's going to be in a, in a very, very, very different situation because a trip to Barbados isn't going to mean anything to her, mm -hmm. right? Daddy's already taking you all over the world. 
Don't mm. worry about it. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you, you need some dude to do that for yeah. you. Yeah. You know, mm. um, but, uh, but yeah, man, I've that, that two parent household is key. Um, I, I've noticed like when I deal with girls that come from a two parent household, especially when their father has money or like takes care of them, they tend to view the world a lot differently than a girl that doesn't have a dad. And it's mm. in your best interest as a man to deal with girls. To, I'm not saying that a two parent household is a fail safe. But it is a damn good uh, pr predicator on uh, on that girl being statistically less of a headache on you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Obviously, we can't predict the future. Of course. Yeah. All we can do is, is is work off of averages and know what on average works the best. Yeah. And I know my daughter will look for a man that's very similar to me. Yeah. And that's some big shoes to fill. Yeah. Those are going to be some big ass shoes to fill. You ain't going to bring no bum. Okay? <laughs> you, you, she ain't going to get played that easily. Mm -hmm. right? Cause she She didn't see that from me to her mom. She didn't see that from me to her. Right. Mm -hmm. So all those are standards that I have to fulfill. Right. It, it needs to be excellence across the board, not just excellence on myself and the business that I want to scale. Not I'm, I'm going to raise dumbasses. Yeah. I'm going to raise, I'm going to raise wimps. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Spoiled brats. That's what I'm going to end up raising. Yeah. You yeah, know, definitely. Don't. Yeah. No, for sure. Um, you okay. some chats here? Yeah, I could hit some of these chats real fast. And there's 3,700 of you guys in here. We've been What's trying to give you all uh, You like the fucking video because this is a hot Stuff to the channel interview. And his channel as well. Um, I'm back, guys. Uh, how, do, how many do we have, Chris, here? I want to make sure. Okay, I'll, re I'll fly through these. I'm back, guys. Fresh, Don, the Don DeMarco Jose. Have you read the Rational Mail yet? Uh, I have not. Is, okay. uh, I, I have seen him on your podcast, so I have not read oh, it. Okay. Yeah. Um, we got, what is the best gym uh, wear, in your opinion, Jose, clothes that are fitted and complement a man's physique? Best gym... Oh, best gym wear. Yeah, I mean, I, I wear a little bit of everything. I wear. I, I'm not picky with the gym wear. I wasn't. I was in a Hanes tank top yesterday when I was. Yeah, at my, yeah it don't matter. I'm just, I'm just lifting as long as it looks good on my body. Spit like, it. just don't. I mean, if you're picking up chicks, obviously it, it's important, right? Because some guys do use don't don't look like a bum. Uh, but just look, put on stuff that that um, I always talk about shows off your best features. Like yeah. I got mm -hmm. big shoulders, so tank tops. I look. Yeah, I look thick in a tank top, right? Yeah. So like, show off your best features. Yeah, you know. Fitted okay. guys is what it is. Fit always uh, beats brand. Shout out FNF team, y'all. Stay doing the Lord's work, putting out content men need. Also, shout out to Jose back there. You just made some more money off me been using the Manscaped brand for a while and worth it. <laughs> there you go. Appreciate that, bro. And then Rajman, 20 bucks uh, from Great Brand. Seven cut fig e com owner here. How do you best evaluate influencers when doing sponsor deals on YouTube slash podcast? Do you just know from internal data from your YouTube buddies? Hard to gauge the value of a 20K promo when FB is more measurable. Uh, Yeah, I mean, man, we've been doing this for years, bro. I've worked with in total of across all companies probably twelve thousand influencers. Holy shit! Um, it's just a lot of data, man. We go we go through a lot of data. If you were to look at the Excel sheets that we run through, I mean, that could be a podcast in and of itself, honestly. Yeah. So it's just a lot of data. You have to analyze it, find patterns. Um, but yeah, man, that that that's a that's a that's a big one. It's it's very hard, whoever that person is, uh, to find. Uh, think of influencers like a portfolio, like a stock portfolio, right? Where you'll have winners and losers and you hope that the winners outperform the losers so your net portfolio is positive. That's yeah. technically how it rolls. So if I have a portfolio of 10,000 that we're constantly cleaning and adding to, right? The goal is for the portfolio to always be net ROI positive. Mm -hmm. But you're going to have a lot of losers. You just of hope course. that you hit those winners. And of you kind of it's feel it out. It's always a risk. Yeah, kind of. Calculating yeah. risk. Yeah. Uh, Troll Village Citizen, me and my friend love your vids. Jose, any advice for my ugly friend? He keeps wearing designer head to toe <laughs> on diamond necklaces, but still has no style. Oh, man. This is I mean, that's what I was talking about, bro. Like, are they talking about this he's guy? He's trying to troll me, bro. Yeah. Oh, this, is this guy's clean. Yeah, he's from Barbados, I have man. No problem, man bro. Home, bro. Hey, goddamn, <laughs> Getting girls, person. brother. Jose is now part of the Avengers, okay? And then we got a lot of thoughts. What's the Avengers? Is that you guys? Yeah, we, a, we, all right. uh, all right. <laughs> well developed men. All right, Betchy 225 for 100 reps non stop is insane. Uh, he was talking about squatting, squatting. But, uh, yeah, Yer Sellers, yo, I was not expecting Jose to be on. Got you guys. There you go. And then last two here, Juan Reyes, shout out to Jose. Can't believe you, uh, you brought him on. This is crazy. Jose is a true inspiration for watching him. Appreciate since that, 2016. Man. And then Monkey D, you stop paying my intuition, keep doing the Lord's work, fellas. Appreciate shout you. Shout to y'all, man. Okay, yeah. go ahead, Fresh. So, this is my last question for okay. you. Let me just head out. One piece of advice you give to somebody right now to be successful that you learned? Uh, One last thing. I always talk about self-awareness. Mm -hmm. um, we are so easy to, to, to blame everything on everyone, right? Oh, it's because girls suck, right? Oh, it's because girls are whores. Oh, it's because I'm short. Oh, it's because I'm black. It's always because of something. Mm -hmm. But what's easier, statistically speaking, that a whole population is wrong or that you're wrong? Mm. 
Mm. Right. So I always talk about self-awareness. So for example, let's take it to business, right? Oh, it's because they have VC money. Oh, it's because they were born rich. Oh, it's because they have connections, <laughs> right? Yeah. You can, we can go on all, all day long of, oh, it's because of this. Yeah. Or is it because of this? Mm -hmm. Do I not know enough, right? Am I not rich enough? Am I not smart enough? Am I not strong enough? All right. Anytime you, you, you have an issue in your life, you can do it with YouTube. Oh, it's because there's so much competition. What did you say? No, I'm going to beat that competition. We're going to better the equipment. We're going to better the production. You can apply this to everything. So it's just full self-awareness. Mm -hmm. Where am I lacking? How do I fix it? And there's almost always a solution for it. Yeah. And every instance of your life, whether it's dating, business, content creation, anything, there's a solution for it that you can apply here. That'll be much easier and get you the results that you want rather than apply it on a blanket statement on a whole group or population. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? You can only really control you know what things in your life you know yeah. you can't use external factors to kind of like validate why you're not where you want to be right? which is why i hate the color argument yeah, oh it's because i hate it too it's because i'm latino or because i'm black right Nonsense. honestly bro i don't see color i just see people Nonsense. and i see how they move their energy and i'm bro. not saying racism is not real by the way no yeah because yeah, i'm is. sure all I, i've experienced it, it i'm sure all exists. of you yeah. have experienced it, it. Yeah. Exists. and by the way america's the greatest country in the world uh everybody's like oh america's so racist if you ever travel You'll see what true <laughs> racism is, bro. Travel. Once you get money and you travel, <laughs> yeah, bro. I've been everywhere. Yeah, yeah and it's yeah, funny. Yeah. Like you feel, like it, you feel different. You yeah. feel they look at you. It's like you look less than them. Yeah. If you want to experience true racism, go anywhere. Go to Europe. Go go anywhere. This, go to Japan, bro. This, go, this, go to Japan. Yeah. You know, I, I wasn't. I was racism? in Tokyo uh, a month ago or so, <clears throat> bro. They look at you different. Cause by the way, they're all. Because they don't allow foreigners yeah. to come in. So I'm a homogenous nation. Yeah. So you go in there as a foreigner, they look like John, our boy from Modern Life Dating. He talks about this. They call him slur words right to his face. They refuse you yep. service. Yep. Like, bro, racism America is, is yeah. the most diverse country in the world. And by the way, go even to our countries. Go to Africa. Yeah. Go to go to Haiti. Right. Go to DR. Go to Honduras. They still look down on people that are darker than you or have a bigger nose than you. Ra racism is everywhere. Yeah. This I would say, nigga. Yeah. <laughs> it's your boy. Yeah. <laughs> this is the most diverse country you'll ever be on. So it is the worst excuse for, ever, for you to use that your color stopped you in this country. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I'm talking about America. Every other country, there is yeah. pretty severe and racism. And they keep referring to, oh, well, slavery and all this other stuff. I'm not saying that atrocities didn't, you know, happen oh, That was here. horrible. But yeah. don't let it know, stop you. But don't let it stop you. Don't let, you know, things from 200 years ago stop you from do, making things happen in the next sure. 20 years. It, it, it goes to the self-awareness argument that I was saying. Yeah. Uh, slavery is very real, yeah. right? They stole hundreds of millions, if not billions, from African Americans over the course of, of potential revenue over the course of years. For sure. I, I, Free I'll labor, agree, all that. Yeah. I'll agree with you with that. Okay, right? Like you're not gonna get a check from that. How do you fix it? So now let's work. Let's move forward. Let's build, right? Like, cause that's your only option. Mm -hmm. Cause if we can complain all day long, you're gonna stay in the same spot. Yeah. Max, you know? But uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I think uh, people have tend it. to look at what they don't have versus what they do have. And that's when issues arise. Yeah, man. All right, Jose, where can they find your brother? Uh, teach Men's Fashion on, on, on YouTube. Same thing on Instagram, bro. That's pretty much it. Dude, yeah. This is a great interview, man. This is fire, uh, thank bro. Thank you for coming, bro. Hey, Legendary. Appreciate you guys, man. I've been watching you guys for a while. You know, yeah. my own audience kept saying, like, yo, you got to be on the fresh and fit. Yeah. <laughs> no, so I really appreciate you. We got guys, a lot of haters too, though. But... It's, yeah. And, and I'm, I'm glad that we were able to bring you, man. Like, cause like yeah. I said, you're, you're married yourself. And, you know, I really, uh, I think it was really great concept for the guys to be able to, like, kind of understand, yeah. you know, when, di when vetting for women, things to kind of look for. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I think you've done a very, a uh, good job of mitigating risk in your own relationship yeah. and you keep yourself attractive by still staying the same man that she fell that, in love with by the way that's no well, that's a whole other conversation part two that's a whole other conversation to have man because so many men go into a relationship or a marriage and they let themselves go women do too Bam. Which, by the way we can unacceptable do, for both parts we should do a part two where we talk about maintaining attraction in a long-term relationship there you go let's do it man yeah he's, he's as it. you guys can see he's not capping he's really busy he's got to get out yeah, of here man. So, right now all right uh, guys we'll catch you guys uh next time we'll catch you guys monday. on monday tomorrow i'm gonna do fed it i'll give you guys a topic but other than that man love you guys we'll catch hey. you guys on money for money monday peace tomorrow for fed it. peace, peace.